Today we're going to use machine vision to analyze an image and separate out certain components and count how many of those components there are. We're going to start with this image of screws, nuts, and bolts, and we're going to separate out um, only the screws and count how many screws there are. Okay? You are going to use a slightly different image, so your numbers are going to be a little bit different than mine, but the idea is going to be the same. Okay? So this is what we want to end up with. We want to start with this image and we want to end up with an image that only has the screws and shows how many of them there are. So I'm going to show you now how to get from the starting image to this final spot where we count how many screws there are. Okay, So we're going to start over from scratch. We're going to get rid of all of this stuff. We're going to start from square one. The first thing that we want to do is we want to look at an image. So I'm going to click on the From Files button over here, and then I'm going to choose Load Image because we're only going to load one image this time. I'm going to insert that. Next, I'm going to drag the Out Image over here to our Preview panel. Now when I drag it, we don't see the image yet. We actually have to run the program first in order to see it. So I'm going to click up here on the Run button. Um, and Oh, it doesn't like that because I haven't chosen which image to load yet. So to choose the image, I come down here to In File, I click on that, and I pick the image that I want. You might have to browse on your computer to find where you have saved your image. Now I'm going to drag that out image over here and run my program. And now we can see the image of the screws, nuts, and bolts right there. Okay. When a person looks at this image, it's relatively clear that there are several screws, nuts, and bolts on a light background. But when a computer looks at this, it's not at all apparent what's going on to the computer. So the computer needs to um, needs to do a few things to, to figure out what's happening. The first thing is something that uh, humans don't even think about consciously, and that's determining what is the foreground objects, in other words, what is important here, and what's the background, what we're going to ignore. When a person looks at this, a person says, okay, these dark things are screws, nuts, and bolts, those are the important things, but a computer doesn't know that automatically, so we have to tell it. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to come over here to Image uh, Processing, and then we're going to click on Threshold Image, and drop that there, and I'm going to choose Intensity. This will allow me to, um, to do a threshold based on the brightness of each pixel. So I'm going to place that down. Now I'm want to see what is coming out of here. So I'm going to create another pane. I'm going to click on this Arrange Horizontally button. That creates another new pane down here. And that allows me to show um, what comes out of this threshold. So um, I'm going to tell the threshold to work on this image that I've already loaded. Then I'm going to drag the Out region that is done with the threshold, or that comes from the threshold, and put it down there. Now I'm going to run this, and what appears down here is that the, the light part down here is what the computer thinks is important, and everything else just gets um, turned clear. Um, so you can see the checkerboard background through it. So right now, the computer is thinking that the white background is the important part, and it's gotten rid of everything else. Now this is the opposite of what we want, so we have to make some changes. So we have to come over here and look at our thresholding properties. So right now, it says that it's keeping all pixels that have a minimum value of 128. So basically it's keeping any pixel with a value of 128 or greater. The way that pixels work is that 
the higher the number is, the lighter it is. So right now, the image is keeping all of the light pixels and it's getting rid of the dark pixels. Now this is just the opposite of what we want. We want to keep the, the dark pixels because those are the pixels that have um, the information about the, the objects. We want to get it rid of all the, the light pixels. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to uncheck this minimum value and we're going to check the maximum value. So we're going to say that we're going to keep all objects um, or all pixels that have a maximum value of 128. So basically any pixel that has a value of 128 or less will be retained and everything else will be thrown away. So if we run this again, now we see that the thresholding has kept all of the dark objects and it has discarded the light background and that's what we want okay now I picked this value 128 because I have looked at this image and I've tried different values and that seemed to work um, if you pick a value that is too high say 200 then you'll see that it keeps the dark images but it also keeps some of the darker area on the outside of our image. All right? That's not what we want. If you pick a number that's too small, then um, some of our objects get removed. Okay, So you have to experiment a little bit and find a number that is um, high enough to keep the objects that you want, but low enough to get rid of the dark background. So 128 works pretty well in this case. Right? Okay, so now we've broken the image basically into two pieces. We have the foreground that we want and we've gotten rid of the background that we don't want. But we still need to do a little bit more. We need to break this apart even further so that we keep so that each object is its own separate entity. Right now the computer thinks that all of these parts are one big thing. We need to break this apart and tell the computer that each one of these little pieces is a separate part. Okay. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to come over here and we're going to click on region analysis and we're going to use the split region function. So I'm going to drop that down and I'm going to choose to split the region into blobs. All right, now I want to create another pane so that I can see what's coming out of this new filter. So I'm going to choose this two by two arrangement up here. And I'm going to drag the out region into my uh, in region in this, in this new filter. And then I'm going to drag, drag the out blobs down here to my new panel. When I run this again, I'm starting to see something interesting. It's given different colors to each of these objects, but up here it lists how many objects I have. And right now it's saying that I have 551 separate objects. Now, if you were to count all of the screws and nuts and bolts, you'd find that there are 13 things up here that we really care about. But down here it's saying there's 551. So something strange is going on. So what we have to do is we have to drag the diagonal um, blob areas into a new panel. And when we do that, we see that there are um, blobs of one pixel or two pixels. There are lots of these that are just little tiny things. Okay, So what that tells me is that there are certain little tiny isolated pixels all by themselves down there, and they're being counted as blobs. Now if I go through this whole thing, I see a lot of 1s and 2s, and then I come down here to 46,000 and 73,000. Right? Now those are the size of the objects that we really care about. The little blobs that are 1 or 2 pixels large are the ones that we can ignore. So we can tell the program to do that. If we come over here to the properties for the split region into blobs filter, we can see that there is a min blob area 
uh, property. So this tells the computer to only keep blobs that are this large or larger. Okay, so I went through here earlier and I found that um, 500 is a pretty good number for my case. Right? So things that are above 500 are generally real parts. Things that are below that are just outliers, just little tiny pixels all by themselves. So if I run this again, now I can see that the program has indeed found 13 things, just like we have 13 objects up here, and the areas are shown over here on the right. So you can see that they're in the neighborhood of, you know, thousands of pixels, all right? 9,000 seems to be the smallest one. Um, so, so by getting rid of anything below 500, we've gotten rid of all those tiny little single pixel uh, things that we didn't really need. All right, so we're getting closer. We've gotten to the point where we have separated our object or our image into various components, but now we need to tell the computer um, which components we're actually interested in. So, for instance, I might want to count all of the screws in this image um, and ignore the nuts and bolts. All right. So, in order to do that, I have to use this region logic function. So I'm going to drag that over here, and I'm going to use the classify regions function. Okay. So I'm going to insert that. I'm going to drag my blobs from the previous filter into my regions here. And if we click on this, there are several different ways to categorize objects. So um, we can look at various features here. So the first feature that we can look at is the area. Um, and in this case, that's not a bad thing to look at. All right? You can see that we have different areas over here. Now you might wonder, well, this 46,000 pixel area, what does that correspond to? So one way we can find out is we can come over here to our blobs image and we can click on this button that says toggle port data array navigation. Now this allows us to see which object corresponds to which number. So we see that object zero is this screw and we can come over here and look at the area for object zero and see that it's 46,000 pixels approximately. So this screw has an area of 46,000 pixels. The next thing, uh, object 1, is a, a bolt and that has about 73,000 pixels. So there's a pretty good difference between those two. Right. The next object is also a bolt. That's also in the 70,000 pixel range. And then we have a nut and that is down close to 20,000. So there's a, a fairly good difference here. Um, the next one is another um, another bolt. So that's around you know close to 65, um, kind of in the same region as the same ballpark as the previous uh, bolts as well. Um, and then the nut is down around 20,000 pixels again. So so. Classifying based on area might be a good way to go. Okay. There's also another way that we can do it. Uh, we could look at the length of these objects. Okay. Um, if we just look at this original image, we can see that we have long screws, medium-sized bolts, and short nuts. So we can maybe do a categorization that way too. So I can run this again and now oh, um, I want to show the actual values from my classify region here. Okay, So these are the values, these are the lengths in pixels of each of my objects. So if I go back here to object 0, my first one, that's this screw and we see that it has a length of 925 pixels and then my bolt has a shorter length of 767. My next bolt is 719. And then the uh, nut is around 
278. So, so this is another way of doing the classification. I could look at the length of these objects. Okay. Now the way that we determine which ones to keep and which ones to discard is we come over here to the properties of the classify regions filter and we choose the minimum and possibly the maximum values that we want. Okay. So say that I wanted to just keep the screws. All right. The screws are the longest ones and we can see that their, um, their lengths are usually around 900 pixels. The bolts are in the 700 pixel range. So if I wanted to keep the screws and get rid of the bolts, I could pick a minimum value of about 800, kind of partway between 700 and 900. Um, and then this should allow me to keep all of the longest things and discard everything else. So I can uh, run this and I can take my um, out accepted objects and put them over here in my last pane and we see that now um, that keeps all of the screws and it gets rid of everything else and it shows me that I have five screws. So that's very good. If we had chosen some something else, maybe we wanted to keep only the uh, bolts which are kind of medium length we could choose to have a or to keep all objects that are a minimum of maybe 400 pixels long and a maximum of 800 pixels and when I do that now I'm keeping all of the bolts and discarding everything else and this shows me a count of four bolts okay so by choosing the minimum and maximum values that you want, you can choose which objects to keep and which objects to discard. So that's how we go from our original image that has lots of different components, and we categorize it, and we keep only the images or only the components that we care about.